Let's touch another obvious base and move on to the Atlantic Division trade deadline primer. Where look, spoiler alert, I might I might figure out a way to to shoehorn James Wiseman talk into this section. I bet you didn't see that coming. But like last time, we'll be going. I don't know when we locked the records in, but there hasn't been any changes in the Atlantic Division. We'll be going in um, order of decreasing winning percentage. So we begin with the Boston Celtics. Uh, look, they're jo- oh, and as a brief recap, man, I suck at this. We're just going through our biggest overarching themes or questions we have about these teams leading into the deadline. We'll talk about any notable assets or we'll have a hypothetical trade for each one, but we want it to be more free flowing than that. So if you listen to the previous podcast, you understand where this is going. Now we're on to the Boston Celtics for real. Uh, They're clearly buyers. My biggest question for them is, are they going to add a big? And I also, you could ask like, are they going to trade Danilo Gallinari who has a player option for next year to kind of cut their tax bill? Or do they just kind of use him as matching salary they don't necessarily need him as matching salary because they do have uh, a trade traded player exception worth five point nine million that expires on February tenth. I'm just curious as to like when you're looking at their rotation, they're not going to trade like their top seven guys, and so they're really not they're not positioned to make a big move. And I've seen some people speculate that hey, maybe they would trade their 2025 first to get a big. I understand why they want a fourth big, but it's a fourth big. Like no, you don't trade a first round pick to do that. Would I trade Sam Hauser or Peyton Pritchard? Yeah, absolutely. I would, but I'm not trading a first round pick to have someone play behind Grant Williams, RW three and Al Horford, or to try and inoculate myself against Horford suddenly aging or RW three getting injured again. But I think that's the closest to their like actual need that they could have. Unless you think that I've looked and like, I guess they could technically use another real wing sized player behind Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum, maybe someone to replace or improve upon the Sam Hauser minutes that are no longer the same level of Sam Hauser minutes they were previously. Yeah, I, I think you know the 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 whole they need a that's been out there, right? The the Celtics are targeting a backup big, and we'll get into that for a couple other teams. And it's sort of it doesn't ever really make a lot of sense to me because at least as a this year thing, and that's all the Celtics should be concerned with, obviously, because they're on the shortest of short lists of, of title threats. I almost wonder if you know, I've never seen this reported, but, you know, Grant Williams is going to be a free agent and there's been some back and forth on extension stuff that hasn't come to fruition. And, you know, we've talked about him as like the Pistons make a lot of sense for, you know, to throw him some money and throw him an offer sheet this summer. It's almost like if you're looking for a third big, it's like you're looking for someone to take those minutes when Grant Williams isn't there anymore. I mean, that's just totally wild speculation, but it makes it, it makes the search for another big guy, a little more logical to me because if you have Robert Williams and you have Horford and you have Grant Williams and you know, like Tatum's fine at the four, if you want to do different lineups, you might need the other big wing for that. But I just don't see the need unless you're talking injury, which then like, well, if we're going to bring that into the equation for literally any team, it, it changes everything. But assuming everything's, you know, everyone's healthy and, and, and the rotation is what it is. Like, where are those minutes even coming from? Like, why would that be? It might almost be the type of thing where they don't need anything. And so it's just, well, but if they needed something, this, I guess, is it, right? And it's, it feels like a very regular season move where it's, you might need it because stuff is going to crop up with Robert Williams or you want to rest Al Horford. But even like looking at Grant Williams, I try to think, well, is there like any playoff matchups where he might not be great for? And the only thing that really came up was like, he doesn't seem like a good matchup for the Warriors. It's like, well, that's only an NBA Finals problem, right? Um, and so Which for them, NBA yeah. Finals problems are problems. But even then, like it, you know, it, <laughs> the odds the odds aren't great that they'll see the Warriors. But you know, they were competitive last year until the Warriors kind of solved them. And I don't think Grant Williams was like the problem. You know, it, it's just there aren't. I, the more I talk about it, the more I'm coming around to like this is just a team that doesn't really need anything. No, and I'm I'm with you. And so their most likely player to be traded for me was Daniel Gallinari, who's also probably the hardest um like player to be traded, if you think about it, just because of the way that uh um like his contract is set up. Like he's not gonna play this year, uh, unless you're going deep into the playoffs. There's been some mention of like, oh, okay, maybe we'll see that with um the Celtics. Could he come back in the playoffs? But I don't know if you'd necessarily want to integrate him that late into the season. Um, so, but he feels like if they're going to trade someone, I don't know if you feel differently. Could it be like, is it Pritchard or Sam Hauser? Like, would those be the 
players you dangle to get a big, or is it just very much like Gallo's salary in two seconds or that traded player exception in two seconds? Yeah, I mean, I probably would lean towards Gallo as the as the piece I'd want to move just because I don't see a scenario where even in the unlikely event he does make it back that he's like he's helpful at all. You know, Pritchard and Hauser theoretically could could do something for you in a in a certain playoff series if there is an injury. But yeah, you're just talking, you know, and then also Gallo's salary is a little bigger, but I don't know why a team it's hard to imagine the team out there that actually wants him with that player option for 6.8 million next year. Um, I guess maybe he's valuable at that number or helpful or not a negative asset, but, but also maybe not. So yeah, I just, it, I, I guess, I mean, Pritchard is expendable really because you have Marcus Martin, you have Derek Wyatt and there and Jason Tatum can handle the ball and you actually have, you know, guys like Horford can, can kind Rock of be too. really need it. Yeah. So there's, there's other options. Um, but Gallo just seems like the least likely guy to be, you know, even marginally helpful. So I guess he's got to be the first to go. I just don't know what, you know, I don't know what team values it, you know, a couple of seconds, depending on, you know, if they're their Celtics own seconds, they probably aren't any good, but Boston does have, um, you know, some, I guess from Dallas, they've got a second or that's even from Houston or Miami. It, there's nothing, there's not a lot of great sweeteners that I think the Celtics would be willing to part with here. Well, so the, the trade that I have for them is the Celtics get Nas Reed and the Timberwolves get Justin Jackson, Portland's second round pick this year and San Antonio's second round pick next year. Two pretty good seconds, I would argue. Mm -hmm. You could also just go. We know Jalen Noel wants out of Minnesota. What's going to happen with D'Lo? Pritchard has one year left on his deal. You could flip Pritchard for Nas Reed straight up because Pritchard has the one year left on his rookie scale. That might be fair. So one of those, I would be against trading Pritchard for Nas Reed because I think the whole idea is just like, let's make this a, you know, nine, 10 man rotation that we want to keep. And just, you know, heaven forbid, like something happens to just, you're, you're trying to like, not that it would be a lateral move, but giving up a guard for your fourth big, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. But I like Nas Reed, even though he's not, he doesn't play like when you look at his playmaking ability or lack thereof, or even what he does on defense, that's not like, the prototypical Boston big, but just as like, he can still stretch the floor. His three point clip is down this year. He can put the ball on the floor too in space. He's going to give you a lot of options defensively. And he's kind of nice insurance against, well, what if Grant Williams gets like a $20 million per year offer that you don't want to match? Nas Reed probably isn't going to cost you nearly as much. And so if, if the opportunity cost is these two seconds or uh, Peyton Pritchard, I think I would do it. I'm curious your thoughts. And just from Minnesota's perspective, I don't, I just, I don't want to give up Nas Reed if I'm them, but you paid Colin Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert a trillion dollars a year combined. You can't go, let's say he cost them mid level exception money to keep. To throw another 11 plus million dollars a year at a big is just like, no, you can't do that. Yeah. My first thought when you, I, I mean, I, I think I, I don't know because of the point you raised. I don't know if I do that if I'm Boston just because I might rather have another guard than a big, all things being equal. But the Wolves really do seem to like Nas Reed. And there were some extension talks out, like, it, which is just bizarre for the reasons you said. I don't understand why he would be. I mean, he's a he's a good player. Like there are, you know, he could play for a lot of teams and he is playing for Minnesota. But I just don't know how much he is. Like, are we are we, if we're the wolves, are we anticipating we're going to trade Carl Anthony towns when we can? And so it makes sense to have the mid-level exception go to a guy who's our, you know, backup big now. I mean, that's like, we're getting, you know, too far down the rabbit hole there. Um, but yeah, I think, I think if I'm Minnesota, I probably would consider that I'd be maybe more interested if Pritchard were the piece there. Although that San Antonio 2024, like that might even, be the number of you know, Portland's this year. Like there's no, what yeah. like, what is port they're 12th in the west right now <laughs> yeah i mean that's yeah it's the type of thing where reed seems really coveted or valued by the wolves which you can sort of understand in a vacuum but in that particular situation i don't know how much sense i think that makes